The next meeting will be the ways and means. Yes. No. <laughs> Chris is <laughs> some Sarah's not ready. <laughs> okay, sure, Sarah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'd like to call uh, to order the Muskegon County Ways and Means Committee meeting for May 10th, 2022, and it is 3.07 p.m. Uh, I'd like to have a roll call, please. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Here. Vice Chair Hughes. Here. Commissioner Lowry. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Pago. Excuse. Uh, Chair Spolnick. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. Here. Commissioner Sear. Here. Next item, approval of the agenda. So moved. Support. A motion of support by the approval of the agenda. Are there any questions, concerns, comments on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. This is, uh, the next item is approval of the minutes of April 12, 2022. So moved. Support. And a motion and support on this item. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Next item is presentations, financial audit by Paul Matz from Raymond Wilson. Thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. Here to share the results of the audit for the year ended September 30, 2021. I know this is the presentation that everyone looks forward to all year. So um, happy to be able to share just a few comments with you. I did want to first and foremost be sure to thank very much Angie and we worked a lot with Carson as well this year. As you know, there were some um, transitions that took place amongst the management on the finance side. Um, going into a lot with some changes, we never know exactly what we're going to walk into with there's those types of changes. But hopefully, if, if you've looked at the audit information, you know everything from our perspective went really smoothly with that transition. Very accommodating, <laughs> very timely. Um, again, just continue to be a good group to work with. So we very much appreciate their efforts um, because the audit is a very significant, very time-consuming process. Um, our goal as part of the audit is to issue an opinion on the financial statements. If you have a copy, it's that very thick set of documents. Um, that we want to make sure that those are useful for this group, um, reliable for this group. And so we do a number of tests of transactions of balances to be able to <coughs> issue an opinion. Uh, we also look at the system of internal controls, the who's doing what, um, looking for segregation of duties, independent reviews and approval. If we would identify concerns or findings in the system of internal controls, we would have to report those as part of the audit also. If you've looked, you haven't seen any, uh, please to report that there were no such concerns that we identified as part of the audit. So there's just a couple of pages in the financial statements that I wanted to maybe just bring to your attention if you want to follow along. If you have a copy, that's great, but it certainly um, is not needed. Um, the first item, though, that I wanted to mention is labeled page three. And when I refer to page numbers, it's the page numbers at the very bottom of the report on the bottom of each page. That's the big one, That's the, big one the annual comprehensive financial report. So starting on page three and going through page 12 is, is this letter that's called the transmittal letter. And what I like to point this out is because this goes a little bit beyond the numbers. Um, it doesn't just tell you what the cash balance is or the change in fund balance for the year, but it talks a little bit about what you accomplished with the use of the funds during the year. So I, I always think it's it's a helpful um, just set of, set of pages. Um, Angie and her team worked to put it together. Um, that just, again, goes a little bit beyond the numbers, talks about some of the initiatives and accomplishments. Um, so I just think that's important to point out because, again, it goes just a little bit beyond just reporting the numbers. I have a question on that. Uh, in the second paragraph, it says um, 
Because the cost of internal control should not outweigh the benefits, the county comprehensive framework of internal controls has been designed to provide reasonable rather than absolute assurance that the financial statements will be free from material misstatement. Is that normal? That's completely normal. You know, essentially what that's trying to convey is that, you know, you could have a system of internal controls where five people were reviewing bank reconciliations, and that's a really solid control. But there's a lot of cost that goes into five person's time reviewing something like that. So what that's saying is the county has sort of balanced um, what risk we're comfortable with based on the internal controls we have right now, considering the cost benefit analysis of you know, what adding additional controls is. But that's really, that's very similar to what our opinion says. We can't guarantee with 100% certainty. You know, we do tests, um, we select items at random, we don't test every transaction that takes place during the year, but we try to do enough to give reasonable assurance um, that there's no issues within the financial records. So yes, that language there is entirely normal Thank and appropriate. You. Um, on page 17, and it takes three pages, going through page 19, is our independent auditor's report. Again, I mentioned our job is essentially to issue an opinion on the financial statements and, and they're being reasonably accurately stated. And that's what we've included here. This is the clean, unmodified opinion that you want to achieve during the audit process. We can't give a better opinion or a higher opinion than this clean audit opinion. Then the next section right after that is the management's discussion and analysis. It starts on page 22, goes to page 33. This is another section I like to point out, somewhat similar to the transmittal letter where it provides sort of a summary of the results for the year. It doesn't get bogged down into too many details. There's a little bit more narrative discussion here that management puts together. Um, well, the full set of financial statements this year are 223 pages. I know that's an incredible amount to try to grasp. So this just, it provides a good high level summary of the results for the year. It compares it to last year also, so you can see some fluctuations and trends. Um, there's some tables that can make the information a little bit easier to follow. Um, and it looks forward a little bit to next year as well. So again, just a comprehensive summary of the results um, to try to give you a high level picture of the financial results for the year. There's some good discussion in there too about, for example, the general fund budget and budget to actual results and some of that information that I think um, is always helpful to see. And I have one other question. Mm -hmm. It's back a couple pages. It says the financial statements of the Mesquite County Grove Commission were not audited in accordance with government mm -hmm. auditing standards. Can you explain that to me? So, there are a set of, it's sort of an, an additional set of rules that can be followed or can be done as part of an audit. So there's some additional concerns um, regarding independence. It's really a documentation issue for the auditor in their files as far as whether it is conducted in accordance with government auditing standards or not. So you as Muskegon County had to have what's called a single audit. That's an additional compliance testing that we do related to the federal funds that you administer. Whenever an entity has a single audit, the audit has to be conducted in accordance with government auditing standards. Those just sort of tie together. The Road Commission, which is audited by another local government, <coughs> does not have a single audit. So they're not required to have theirs conducted in accordance with government auditing standards. But I can tell you from a practical perspective, as far as what they do as part of the audit, it's 99.5% the same as if it would have been conducted in accordance with government auditing standards. I guess I, I want to know too, are, are we responsible for their audit too? So ultimately, yes, there is responsibility there. And you know, similar to Health West, those two are both audited by other auditing firms. Um, we get copies of their financial reports. We have to have some communications with them um, regarding the audit. Um, but ultimately, we rely on their audit and the financial statements that they've prepared. Um, and essentially, we just take that information and put it into this financial report. But there is some responsibility, some oversight by this board because um, uh, it's included with your financial statements. Um, 
curious to say Health West was uh, in the same situation. Did you review any of Health West's information? So we've had conversations, um, and I know this group is aware of the um, some concerns with some collectability of some receivables. Um, and that was the main point of our discussion is we wanted to make sure we were comfortable with the documentation they obtained to support the validity of the receivable, to support the fact that they felt it was collectible. Um, we were provided with some documentation, what we call it live confirmation, which is basically um, that entity says, yes, this is the amount of funds that we owe you. Um, so we rely on some of that information, but that's where it's a little bit tricky because we, we didn't audit that entity, but given the significance of that in this particular situation, we wanted to at least be comfortable uh, with where they concluded there. So in your professional opinion, you're not really sure whether that item may be collectible or not? No, that's correct. Thank you. And, and actually, on, on the next page, if you want to turn to um, the next page, I was going to refer to as page 40. Page 40 is called the balance sheet for governmental funds. Um, you can see that first numerical column there is for the general fund, that second column for Health West, the third column being the new one this year with the ARPA funds. You can see that was the first tranche of funds that were received. Um, and not spent as of September 30th. Um, but specifically, you know, on that Health West, you can see there it is that does have that large amount due from other governments. Um, now, what, uh, without trying to bore you with too many accounting mumbo jumbo, but you can see about two thirds of the way down that page, there's a section called Deferred Inflows Resources. Okay. Essentially, what the accounting group rules require here is that any amounts that are not received within two months or three months after the end of your, of the fiscal year of the entity, they need to be deferred. So essentially, that can't sit in revenue for the year because it's not available funds. You didn't collect them within a short period of time. Um, so that's, that's how it sits on the financial statements right now. But you can see if you look very near the bottom of the page of the fund balance, obviously it's a very significant um, negative number in the overall fund balance position. Thank you. Um, if you move forward two pages to page 42, there's the statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. That's sort of a fancy way of just saying the income statement for the year set up again with those same columns. What I just wanted to point out here was for the general fund that there was an increase in fund balance for the year of about 3.4 million. It's the third line from the bottom, bringing the ending fund balance to 14,989,000. I know the fund balance policy talks about a particular calculation and, and it's 27.3% at ending fund balance is of the prior year expenditures and transfers out. And that's up from about 18.9% in the previous year, which again, with the increase in fund balance, makes sense that that percentage has come. Well, could I just, on page 25, um, we just were on that a minute ago, it said that at the bottom there, it said the fiscal year's operations resulted in an increase in the primary government's net position of $12.6 million. So how does that relate to the 3.4 million? Is that, what is that? Is that an all asset? Is the 3.4 in cash? So, no. So what I would, um, as far as the 3.4 million, I would look to the further column to the right, the total governmental funds of $1,304,021. On page 42. On page 42, do you see that change in fund balance in the total column? Under total yes, zone zone. Okay. So what, what that 12.6 million is, it includes these same funds. And now I'm gonna really bore you with some accounting information, but there's two different perspectives that are presented in the financial statements. Page 42 is on a different basis of accounting than what the 12.6 million relates to. 
So the information on page 42, just for one example, if you make a debt service payment, that's an expense. You can see there's a line for debt service principal on that statement. That's an expense right here. But on the different method of accounting, if you think of a traditional business, um, <coughs> that debt payment isn't an expense. It reduces a liability. So there's two different perspectives as far as how the accounting goes. If you look at page um, 43, there's, there's a reconciliation between fund balance and net position change. So that's a piece of it. The other piece of it is on page 42, you only have what are called the governmental funds. So that's your general fund, your special revenue, debt service and capital project funds. But as part of that 12.6 million are all of what's called the enterprise funds. So that's got the wastewater, solid waste, the airport, ev everything. I prefer to use the 12.6 in our fund balance. <laughs> I would love to do that. It's 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 just it's two different perspectives on how to explain. Yep. So the the last statement that I just wanted to mention real briefly was on page 44. Just if you were interested in a little bit more information in the general fund, the budget to actual statement. This schedule walks through the original budget, the final amended budget, and then the actual results for the year for the general fund specifically. Um, and you can see there was a favorable variance in the actual results compared to our final budget. There's a lot here, obviously. Um, anybody ever wants the two-hour version, they know how to reach me, but um, I figured I would spare you that today. And if, if there's any questions, though, that I can answer, um, any hopefully accounting lessons I can give, but I mean, I would be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, Mr. Uh, appreciate it. Okay, more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, we got item six is finance reports, the February budget report. Is there a report or are we just filing this? Just okay. Do we have a copy of that? It was sent electronically. Oh, it was sent electronically. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll file that. Uh, next item is public comment on an agenda item. Is there any public comment on an agenda item? Anybody online? No questions. No questions online. Okay, we're closing public comment. Going to items for consideration. The first item is WM22-05-39. Move to approve a one-year contract with Shoreline Staffing to provide temporary staffing services through June 1st, 2023, with the possibility of two subsequent one-year extensions. So moved. Sure. A motion in support, questions, comments, or concerns on this item. I do have a question. Uh, yes, I'm sure you. Should we go out for bids on this, or did we, or is this somebody that we're just extending the contract with? Kristen Wade, Human Resources Director, we did go out for bids. And this was the lowest one? Correct. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yes, for sure. I'll be right. Yeah. Um, who do we have right now? Is it the same? We have good temps currently, and this okay. was for the second option. So now the departments will have oh. two options. Oh, I'm glad you clarified that. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, that's all. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see what we'll call on this. Commissioner Lowry? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Vice Chair Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes, and that item passes. The next item, WM22-05-40, move to approve payment of the accounts payable of $15,761,067.31, covering the period from March 19th, 2022 through April 15th, 2022, and P-card and EFT payments covering the period of March 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2022, as presented by the county clerk. Support. 
Do a motion and support. Questions, comments, or concerns on this item? I do have a question. Commissioner Hughes, go ahead. Angie, with this, since we changed things around and you pay things before, you know, they come back to us, they come back after they're paid. How much of this was paid before we approved this? Um, most of this has been approved through the board already. Okay. In fact, most of the items that are highlighted on here are all under board approved contract. Okay. Um, so I don't have that number for you right off. It would be the smaller stuff. Um, you should have received that full report in your email. Okay. <laughs> I just and, and it will outline that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Vice Chair Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Lowry? Yes. Commissioner Sears? Yes. That item passes. The next item is WM22-05-41, the move to authorize the sale of a 2007 Chevy 2500 HD VIN number 1 GCHK29KX7E529112 through a medium of auctioning incorporated. So moved. Support. Have a motion and support. Any questions on this item? Hearing none. <coughs> All in favor of this, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passes. The next item is WM22-05-42. The move to approve exercising a two-year optional contract extension per RFP 19-2339 <coughs> with PFM Financial Advisors for the original negotiated price and authorize the board chair to sign the agreement upon corporate council review. <coughs> I have a motion and support. Are there any questions, uh, comments, or concerns on this item? Commissioner Nash, is that a hand? I see yeah, I was just, um, <clears throat> I was concerned with that language. Because we said, we said a two year, and in the original motion, I think it was one year. Or are we just combining the two options? On, on 42? Yeah. 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 Angela Gashevsky, finance director. Yes, that would just be combining the two optional renewals. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, is this not budgeted? I got the right one. No, it is budgeted. It Sorry. Is budgeted. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Vice Chair Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Lyon? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Mr. Yes, I please. forgot. There was a question I had. Okay. Um, I noticed in the uh, uh, contract that there's no uh, reporting to the commission. Um, is there a reason for that? Or a reason not to? I guess I'm not sure what they would report. There <laughs> seem to be a lot of items in there, the, you know, our investments and and uh, financial uh, financial matters that we would be interested. In, but maybe I'm not understanding it. Mostly the financial advisor helps us, but anytime we're doing any kind of bond, any work with bonds, those types of things. Um, so those are going to come to you separately as we do them. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Let's have a roll call on this, please. Did we? Did we? Yes. Yeah. 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 It was an answer. Oh, answer. Right. My yeah. question Marcia, is an additional. I screwed it up. <laughs> All right. All right, next item is WM22-05-43. Move to approve exercising a two-year optional contract extension per RFP 19-2340 with Miller Canfield Paddock and Stone PLC to provide bond council services for the original negotiated price and authorize a board chair to sign the agreement upon corporate council review. So moved. Or 
I have a motion and support on this item. Questions, comments, or concerns on this one? Yes, Commissioner Hungry. Yes, um, if uh, Angie could uh, come up, please. How is this uh, different from the previous item? Um, I mean, both are both are dealing with bonds on some level. Is there a difference? Yes, yeah, this, sure this is, is bond council, so this is legal. Okay. PFM is financial advisors. Okay, all right, okay. I figured there was an explanation. <laughs> We'll call, please. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Vice Chair Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Lowry? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. That item passes. Next item WM22 slash 05 44. Move to approve request for procurement level quotes for professional audit services beginning with the fiscal 2022 annual audit. So moved. Support. I have a motion and support on this item. Questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Commissioner Nash, go ahead. I guess the only question I had was why was it procurement level? That's a great question. It's specifically due to the dollar amount that we'll be spending for that service. It will be under $150,000. Currently, the policy allows us to do procurement level quotes at that. Dollar amount, anything over $150,000 goes for solicitation. Yeah, let me add to that. We're going to bring back, I'm sure Larry brought a good point on this. Right. So we're bringing the a new change in that document so it reads differently and that we get um, bids versus a quote, is what we're talking about. I thought anything over 25 is a quote. It's a quote, but it's whether. You're sending that to a group of people or sending that to a larger spread of people. It, it depends on the, the spread you go for. I guess I'm, I was thinking bid started at uh, 100,000, not 150. No. Bid started up. Oh. You are to get quotes at 25,000 with board approval, procurement level quotes up to 150,000. At 150,000, we do a competitive solicitation where we set that out um, for vendors to competitively bid on. Did we change that? Because I thought it was 100,000. It's been 2017, I believe, was when that policy was it changed. Then, oh, okay. We'll we'll be looking at that as as the administrator said and, and bringing something back um, to change the amounts on that. Here's your Larry. So can we get a list of who you intend to solicit for these quotes? Sure, absolutely. Any other questions on this one? Let's roll call on this one, please. Commissioner Brown. Yes.
so you you had two others that you disqualified or your team disqualified in the process <coughs> yes and the other there were no other qualified firms that applied for this um no and we did we can see which firms download these documents and there were oh, a couple dozen that, that took a look at it so it's not that they weren't seeing it the net direct is a good yeah is a good tool to use so they were seeing it okay I, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Matt, was there a significant price difference between these? There was a price difference, yes. Um, but when we looked at it, the average cost per hour for BLZ was less. BLZ proposed over 8,500 hours of effort. The other firm proposed around 6,000 hours of effort. So when we divide the two numbers, DLZ was lower per hour. Um, and, and the scores you know, reflect that. But DLZ's technical qualifications and experience was higher. Just in my mind, you know, it's not like we don't pay exactly the same space. We can only put so much stuff in it. Seems like a million dollars, over a million dollars, is a lot of money to have somebody laid out. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of engineering going in that. And when it comes to engineering on a project, we, we do other analysis as well. Uh, you typically I'm see fairly familiar with that. You, you, uh, you know, we typically see, you know, 15% or yeah. higher in engineering. Yeah. We budget 25% for professional services. Yeah. This is around 10% based on our estimates of the of the cost of the And this project. does include the outside yeah, of the building yeah. too. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all and we're gonna close in some of the windows and stuff too. So correct. Yes, new windows, skin, all right. you know, rearrange. There's three parts to it. I don't I didn't hear the motion, but there's the this making this a courtroom, replacing the walls, and remodeling the sixth floor, removing the asbestos, and, and redoing it. The first floor is a happy land playground. <laughs> no. Any other co questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> All right, so we'll call vote on this, please. Commissioner Lehring. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Chairman Skolnick. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright. Yes. Commissioner Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Sear. Yes. <laughs> that item passes. The next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Does anyone have any unfinished business they'd like to bring to the floor? You know, the next item is new business. Is there any new business? New business? New business? Being none, public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? Anybody online there? No hands are up. No hands up. Okay. Final board comments. Would anybody like to comment? Any okay. comments? Okay. Call this meeting adjourned. Thank you.